For some reason, the video on microarray is extremely long, so I'm just splitting it up into two separate videos. The second function of the microarray is we can use it to determine something known as gene expression. In chapter 16, we talked about gene expression, and I said that gene expression just means that the gene in our cells will undergo a process known as transcription to produce mRNA, and when the mRNA is translated, the polypeptide is synthesized. So that's what gene expression means in a nutshell. But to keep this thing short, what microarrays can do is it can determine or tell you whether the gene undergoes transcription or not. So how do we do that? As an example, we have a gene over here, as you can see, and we also have the DNA probes of a particular position in the microarray. Now, Remember, this gene is in a cell, whether it's in, we usually do this in the lab setting. So in the cell over here, what exactly happens is that gene undergoes transcription. Remember the process of transcription, the DNA will separate, not exactly like that, but let's just keep it, let's just visualize it as simply as possible. And RNA nucleotides will join to the template strand to form complementary base pairing. So A, C, 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 U, C, G, A, U. And once that has happened, it will then form the mRNA, the phosphodiester bonds form. I'm representing the mRNA as the blue in color. So the mRNA is formed. Therefore, the gene is expressed. So in this case, uh, what actually happens is, uh, as you can see in the cell here, those blue colored things are forming inside the cytoplasm. And what are those blue colored things? Those blue colored things are the mRNA uh, molecules. So it doesn't just form one mRNA molecule because transcription can happen more than once. So let's assume here it forms a few mRNA molecules. So what the scientists will do then is, instead of extracting the gene from the cell, they will take out the mRNA. So the mRNA is extracted from the cytoplasm and then um, we will treat it with an enzyme known as reverse transcriptase. I've talked about reverse transcriptase before. Reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that converts RNAs back to DNA. So in the lab, what we do is we will just convert the mRNA back and the enzyme will join TGGG because these are DNA nucleotides, AGCTA, and in this case over here, it makes something known as complementary DNA. So this is how the cDNA looks like. C just means complementary. Now, once it makes a single-stranded cDNA, we don't have to make it double-stranded because, remember, during microarray, we want single-stranded DNA molecules. So what happens here is uh, we will add a red tag to the cDNA and the cDNA is added to the microarray and allowed to hybridize with the DNA probes. So, and then we wash away the unpaired DNA as per usual. But let's just check this out, okay? So can the cDNA pair up with the DNA probe over there? Yes, they can because it is complementary to the DNA probe. I know it's a bit small, but yeah. So, yep, yeah, they are complementary to, to the DNA probe over there. So, they will stick together to the DNA probe. So, I'm just representing those green fragments with the red fluorescent tags. Now, can we wash them away? No, we can't wash them away because they are stuck to the DNA probes. And when you view them under UV light, what does that tell you? It tells you that this particular gene is being expressed. In the earlier videos, it was to detect the presence of gene, whether the cell has the gene or not. But in this particular technique, it is to determine whether the gene is being expressed. Gene being expressed just means, is the gene active? Is it undergoing transcription? That is all we are doing for this particular bit of technology. So let's try this again. Now, let's say that there is a cell in this particular cell here, the gene exists. Yes, we know that the gene is present, but no transcription happens. So does it produce mRNA? No. 
And even if we extract something out, we can't see whether we took out the mRNAs or not because mRNAs are very small. So we will put it under reverse transcriptase. Will it produce cDNA? No, it will not produce cDNA. And even if we try to add the red tags, there's nothing to add the red tags to. So the red tags are then added to the microarray. There's no cDNA, yeah, by the way, so they are just floating around in the microarray. And when you wash them away, there's nothing that is paired up with the DNA probes and all the red tags are removed and when you view them under uv light you will not see anything there is no glow at all what does that mean that means that in this case the gene is not expressed so for earlier cell when there was a glow the gene is expressed but for this particular cell here when there is no glow the gene is not expressed no transcription happened no mrna molecules were produced let's try to put this into action so Instead of, okay, I know that the earlier examples of microarray had nine positions, but to keep things very simple here, uh, I'm just going to say that there are only four positions. So there is position A, position B, position E, and position D. And in this case, those four positions represent a gene probe. Okay, they represent a single gene. All right. And what about this cell? Look at the cell. The cell has four types of genes as well. The cell has gene A, gene B, gene E, and gene D. Or gene, yeah, so I'm just not going according to the alphabetical order. All right. But even though the cell has four genes, which genes were expressed? Only genes A undergo transcription to produce mRNA and only genes D undergo transcription to produce mRNAs. So, uh, what about genes B and genes E? They did not undergo transcription at all. So that means in this case, the genes were inactive. But how do we prove this? Okay, because we can't see the mRNAs, right? We can't see transcription uh, happening under the light microscope. So how do we prove that the cell only expresses genes A and genes D? In this case, we take out the mRNAs from the cell. And of course, these are mRNAs from genes A and mRNAs from genes D. They don't have those alphabets there, by the way. I'm just saying that they came from those respective genes. We treat it with reverse transcriptase and we get back cDNAs. We add the red color tags, all right? And when we add the red color tags to the complementary DNA, we will then add the cDNA to the microarrays and allow them to hybridize with the DNA probes. So when they have hybridized with the DNA probes, the cDNAs from genes A, yep, they will be able to hybridize with the probes at position A, right there, right there, and right there. And for position D, uh, cDNA from genes D, they are able to hybridize with that one, with that one, and with that one, like that. So, in this situation, what actually happens then? When you view them under the, you wash away any unpaired cDNAs that, do, uh, that exist, okay? But in this case, there were no unpaired DNAs, cDNAs, and you view them under the UV light. When you view them under the UV light, you notice that in this case over here, only positions A and positions D are glowing. What does that tell you? It tells you that while the cell has genes A, B, D, and E, it only expresses genes A and genes D. That's what we have to understand for this one right here. So we have to be a bit careful for this. So let's try this again. Let's take another situation as well. In another, in another situation, we still take the mRNA out of the cell. We treat it with reverse transcriptase, produce the cDNAs, add the red tags, uh, add it to the microarray, allow it to hybridize wash away the unpaired DNAs and view it under UV light, we notice something rather odd. We notice that, yes, position A and position B are glowing. So what does that tell us? In this case, they only express two different genes, A and B, but notice the glow. A is producing a very strong glow and B is not producing a very strong glow. It is glowing in red, but it's not as um, intense as the position A. So what that tells us is, it tells us that in position A, there are more cDNA, 
and position B has less cDNA that are attaching to the DNA probes. So that tells us that, that because why is there more cDNA in position A? Because they have more mRNA. But why is there less cDNA in position B? Because it produced less mRNA. Why did A have more mRNAs? Because it had high expressions. That means transcription of gene A happened more. But for B, less transcription happened. So while gene A and gene B were both expressed, gene A has a higher rate of expression and gene B has a lower rate of expression. So in summary, we can use the microarrays to detect the presence of genes in an organism where we extract the DNA and make it undergo PCR, denature the DNA to make it single-stranded by heating it up, add the rate tags, add it to microarrays and allow it to hybridize, wash away the unpaired DNA and view it under UV light. The glow indicates that the genes are present. But to detect gene expression, you extract the mRNA, not the gene by the way, not the DNA. You treat it with reverse transcriptase, it forms cDNA, you add the red tags, allow, add it to the microarray and allow it to hybridize, wash away the unpaired cDNA and view it under UV light, and the glow in this case indicates that the gene is expressed. So if you extract the DNA and add it to the microarray, that is to detect the presence of the gene. But if you take the mRNA, make it into cDNA, and then add it to the microarray, that is to detect whether the gene is expressed or not. Those are the two differences you have to know when it comes to the application of microarrays or DNA chips.